full circle look at the seemingly endless cycle of gun violence in America. While lawmakers continue to debate what actions need to be taken or where the attention should be directed, victims struggle to move forward and they're often forced into living a new life they did not anticipate. All new tonight, our Vanessa Ariza is digging into the multiple perspectives of this issue, exploring the destructive psychological impact gun violence takes on everyone and how many people are learning to live through it. When it comes to gun violence and shootings, the old saying, I never thought it would happen to me, seems to have shifted from I hope it doesn't happen to me today. We live in a society where shootings are the norm, where no one wants to turn on the television to see how many people were shot in a 24 hour span. That is why we want to go full circle and look at shootings from a different perspective, how they're affecting everyone around us, whether we realize it or not, and most importantly, how to move forward. A mundane task like making iced coffee in the kitchen may not be a moment to cherish, but for Kimberly Walker, she is enjoying every minute minute with her kids. Through all this, I definitely learned that life is precious <laughs> and you can't take any time for granted. On December 6th of 2019, her perspective changed. Three people were killed at Pensacola's Naval Air Base. One of them was 19-year-old Muhammad Haytham, or Mo, as Walker and her family called him. He was her son's best friend and a friend of the family. Mo's death has taken its toll that has spanned years. Definitely trauma, each of us, from uh, in how we found out. We all have pain associated with it, or trauma associated with, like I said, I feel almost like, uh, I don't even have the right to say that because of thinking of his family because if my pain and my children's pain and the impact on us is so significant I can't even imagine their grief and um, pain. Dr. Joseph Sacrin with Johns Hopkins understands that as a trauma surgeon he has seen the impact of gun violence right in front of him and to him at the age of 17 he was shot in the throat with a 38 caliber bullet. I had a ruptured uh, windpipe. I had a uh, had an injury to the big blood vessel in my neck. Um, I had paralyzed vocal cord. Uh, so a pretty significant injury that, um, you know, not everyone survived. That moment pushed him to pursue medicine. But now he says the hardest part of his profession isn't treating the shooting victims, but rather the trauma after. The worst part of my job is having to walk into those waiting rooms and to explain to those moms and dads that their child that left that morning is never coming home again. And Vanessa, every time I do that, a piece of me dies. As a society, Dr. Sacron says we've become somewhat numb to mass shootings, calling it a complex public health problem. No one person or one organization is going to solve this problem. It requires a multidisciplinary approach that cuts across sectors. People are scared, justifiably. The first way to battle the problem, Natasha Pierre says, is to start talking. As a mental health educator, she has seen the mental toll shootings across the country has taken on our society, herself included. I seldom go to the grocery store. For me, you know, I would always go to the grocery store. We are a society, Pierre says, where shootings are affecting all of us, and we're pretending not to know, or we feel guilty when it's not our loved one who has been killed. She says what we need to remember is we are all human. It's hard for everyone in different ways. And so that's why I say we need compassion. You know, I live for the day where we no longer have to say, you never know what someone's going through. Just take it as a default that everyone is going through something whether you can see it or not. Pierre recommends finding a support group. And if you don't want to talk, that is OK. She says, just listen. When you see that there's other people just like you, it kind of opens you up. You hear their coping strategies. You hear what they're doing to, to get through. And it allows for an opportunity for you to begin to create a strategy to deal with everything that you're going through. That strategy has helped the Walkers. I think we definitely don't talk enough about the mental toll of people afterwards, whether it's people who were in the shooting or people like myself who were not directly in it. It's important to 
have people still sharing their experience, sharing how they're feeling and how to cope with that and how to experience life afterwards. Vanessa Ariza, ABC Action News. Vanessa, thank you. Continuing this theme, it's a sad reality that we really do need to be aware of our surroundings and the potential for danger in almost all walks of life. For instance, there was this mass shooting here in Florida yesterday on a boardwalk in Hollywood while people were out enjoying the beach. Six adults and three children, including a one-year-old, were shot and sent to the hospital after a fight broke out there. The Gun Violence Archive says this was the 263rd mass shooting in the U.S. this year in just 150 days. If you're curious, they define a mass shooting as a minimum of four victims shot, not including the gunman now. This comes about two months after state GOP lawmakers here in Florida pushed their agenda forward, passing constitutional carry legislation. This allows adults to carry concealed weapons without a government issued permit or required training in an effort to protect themselves. We aren't alone in this. Over half the states in the U.S. have similar books or laws on the books.